Okay, pardon the sound of a dog trying to eat peanut butter in the background, but uh, in the meantime, I'm going to do a little unboxing here. And I've been kind of excited to check this particular item out. So, came in from Lulu, so I'll get rid of this paperwork. What do we have today? It's hubris. So I've seen some really good reviews about this, uh, particularly one from Questing Beast that uh, really intrigued me. Something about the way that this is done makes me think that if I do put together a Conquest of the Sphere role-playing game supplement or, or source book or whatever, that I perhaps I'll do it the way that this book is done. So I want to sit down and read this and make sure that that is, in fact, the kind of formatting that I want to do. But I think it may be. Uh, anyhow, this is for DCC, or Dungeon Crawl Classics, a sword and sorcery campaign setting by Mike Evans. Uh, unfortunately, it was dinged up a little bit. It's only available right now on Lulu for, in soft cover, as far as I could find, which was a little disappointing. I would have preferred to have a hard cover, especially because, you know, soft covers are soft. Uh, through, from what I understand, there's a lot of charts, a lot of stuff on uh, mutations, and uh, what I'm particularly intrigued by is setting up certain parts of the world and then putting in, like, random charts to help you build what that part of the world is like, which is something that, for my Conquest of the Sphere game, if I am to do a game instead of just fiction at this point, um, that's sort of what I'd like to do. It's such a big, uh, expansive and strange setting that I'd like to use random charts to kind of explore that for, for people and, and for people to be able to explore it in that way. So it's one of the reasons why this particularly intrigues me. That said, also, I've really enjoyed Dungeon Crawl Classics. I've enjoyed running Dungeon Crawl Classics. And part of the fun of DCC is the insane random charts. And I mean, look at all of these. These charts are crazy. There's so many of them. Um, I just take a look. I've got some dice sitting right next to me. So, you know, where are we at here? This is the Unsettled Expanse. I'm just going to roll an encounter here. 84... Um, area of forest that has been devastated by some disaster. If able to get an aerial view, one can glimpse a gargantuan reptilian footprint in the mud. Fantastic. That's great. Uh, just that simple thing, you know, you're doing a, an exploration game, you're wandering through a certain area, you roll for something like that. That's, that's fantastic. You've got the potential right there for an encounter or two. Uh, and you didn't even have to plan for that. So this is good if you're doing, I think, hex crawl type games or, you know, point crawl, whatever. Uh, if you're just looking for doing some adventures where who knows what's going to happen next. I think that's that's great. It's sort of freeing. It's exciting. It's It captures a little bit of that. The, everybody's, you know, talking about the OSR, but it captures a little bit of that old school sense of things. Um Strange and Terrible Gods. So there's not a ton of art, but the art that I have seen seems fairly evocative. Like, this is pretty creepy. There's some weird stuff in here, for, for sure. Uh, lots and lots and lots of charts about all kinds of stuff, it looks like. So that's great. I mean, that's really handy if you're looking... You know, that's not always great at the table. Sometimes it is. I don't know about the charts in here. Some charts are particularly good at the table. Some are better left in the session planning. Uh, but, you know, if you don't have a lot prepped for a given session, you can sit down with some charts and do some rolls and come up with all kinds of great stuff. Here we have Strange, Mystical, and Fantastic Item Generator. Uh, that's great. This looks like another D100 chart. So, yeah. Well, D96... How does that work? I don't know. Anyway, um, what do we have here? So, 72. This is the mystical. No, 
I rolled 72 again. How often does that happen? Okay. 83, the mystical lantern. Mystical lantern of the 39 of the meek uh, or wood nymph. The mystical lantern of the meek wood nymph. Nymph. I got no idea what that would be, but hey, that'd be fun to find out. So anyway, that's hubris. Uh, this is, uh, that's not hubris. I haven't done a review of it, but that's just a quick little look at this. This is um, billed as a world of visceral adventure. And I do think it's supposed to be pretty um, strange, pretty dark. I think it leans into the um, grimmer, darker, bloodier, stranger side of DCC, which, I mean, the game's already pretty darn dark, strange, weird, grim, all of that. Um, yeah. Anyway, I'm excited to dip into this, and uh, it'll probably be, it'll probably be 2022 before I get to running some more DCC, but I'm hoping that I can use this as a tool while doing that. I don't know if I'll end up using the setting that this presents. I, I really don't know. I'll have to sit down and see if it if it really sings for me. But I'm sure those charts are going to help me with uh, designing new, strange, uh, unexpected adventures for my uh, players. So, yep, Hubers. Uh, check out on Lulu. I'll put a link below. So, take care.